Thank you all for showing up here. Um, these are beautiful spaces that we have here, and I remember the older ones, and I have a confession for you. Back when I was in high school, I got a lot of speeding tickets, and I had to take a driver's improvement class that Trooper Lohman was doing, and it was in the old rooms here, so I'm glad that we have a new space so that now my kids are getting their licenses, they can come and take their driver improvement class here. Um, but of course, the library has many uses other than just for delinquents such as myself. Um, Today you will observe the latest in library design and services. So please permit me to take a moment to speak briefly on the proud history of the Queen Anne's County Library. The library was founded on June 3rd in 1909 as the Centerville Free Public Library. It opened at the back of the Biscid store in the Chambers building on the corner of Liberty and Water Streets. Library services were free uh, however, voting members contributed a dollar per year. In 1919, the library was moved to the Anthony Building on Water Street. There was a children's room that was in the basement. And there was often no heat in the building. Uh, and there was a bookmobile that was housed in the garage behind the building. The library was incorporated into a nonprofit charitable organization on March 23, 1928. And with the support from the Queen Anne's County Commissioners, service was then expanded to include the entire county. In 1944, the library's name was changed to the Queen Anne's County Free Library. Uh, the bookmobile service started in 1951 with the purchase of an army surplus truck. And the bookmobile made stops throughout the county as well as the public elementary and middle schools uh, service that was discontinued in 1990, but of course now we have the bookmobile as back. In December of 1967, the corner, cornerstone was laid for a new public library building uh, to be built on Commerce Streets in Centerville. The library land was given by an anonym, anonymous donor, um, and that has sort of been the history of the library, right? A lot of the community volunteering and giving of their time and resources uh, for not just Centerville, but also here in Kent Island. Uh, volunteers moved the collection by hand, carrying the books across town. The building was dedicated on January 5th, 1969, and the interior of the Centerville branch was fully renovated and rededicated on June 24th, 2017. Despite these and previous renovations to the main library, 40 years ago, 40 years ago, it became clear that a new branch was needed to effectively serve the population on Kent Island and in the surrounding areas. A grassroots movement made up of community leaders and residents saw the project to fruition and the Kent Island branch officially opened on August 29th of 1989. In similar fashion, it was what the encouragement of the Queen Anne's County community during a time of many competing uh, fiscal priorities, uh, which guided the county commissioners to recognize the importance that an expansion and renovation of this branch was necessary. There are 600 bricks and a half million dollars, which are a testament to the community's involvement, dedication, and partnership to this project. And on behalf of the county commissioners, I thank everybody who committed either financial resources or time to get out there and do the fundraising. Um, without you, the library wouldn't be here and, and the expansion project wouldn't be here. And the immense public pressure on the commissioners didn't hurt either to get this project going. Uh, today, uh, libraries are light and fun and aesthetically pleasing. They're inviting with ergonomic, flexible, friendly, environmental friendly spaces, uh, spaces that range from open to intimate, uh, all of which accommodate technology that was never even thought of when the libraries were first built. Following this ceremony, we hope that you will stay to enjoy refreshments, conversation, and tour the remarkable new library spaces that have over these last three years been reimagined, newly constructed, and fully renovated. A vastly expanded children's area, dedicated teen lounge, private study rooms, all new bright airy spaces, new computer stations, and as many of you may have already seen the areas, following last year's ribbon cutting for the new construction, today you will experience spaces you once knew but are now different, very different in some cases. Today we celebrate the completion of phase two, the conversion of the old library space into community meeting rooms, more reading and workspaces, and best of all, 
and this is, I think, one of the cooler things, is our very own maker space. You'll see some, most certainly, uh, you want to stay after the, uh, excuse me, after the ceremony for a demonstration of the 3D printing technology in the maker space and other remarkable technologies. Um, I have a few more speakers, so please permit me to introduce you to another partner, Irene Padilla, the state librarian, uh, who was instrumental to matching our local contributions dollar for dollar. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And I, too, spent many hours in this room, uh, various meetings that people who uh, met here from around the state, and it was very dark. I do remember that. I don't think it had any windows, and it was... Um, it, well, I don't know what I don't want to go back in time. What I want to say is this is beautiful. <laughs> so thank you for having me. Um, as you know, library facilities are a crucial part of America's infrastructure. And during the pandemic, libraries really stepped up to the plate to offer essential lifeline to members of our community. Today, libraries continue to provide access to Wi-Fi and internet hotspots access to computers and other digital resources, and opportunities to develop valuable skills at any age. Maryland has provided mandated state funding for public library capital needs since 2008. Fiscal 2024, which is the year we're in fiscally, uh, is the 16th year that state assistance will be available to Maryland public libraries. Program priorities include geographic diversity, and stimulating local support for library facilities development. Since the inception of the program, $82,325,000 in state funds have been authorized, leveraging more than $370 million in local matching funds, or nearly four and a half times the amount of the state's investment. So that's where you all came in, come in, in, in putting your time and funds and um, your interests in the library forward and helping make this happen. However, the need continues. Libraries in Maryland have $424 million in capital needs at this point. The County Library Capital Program helps to improve our infrastructure provide better library service to our communities, and create jobs. The very first state capital grant for the Kent Island branch was $325,000 for design, and it was awarded in 2018. So look how far we've come in just this short time. This was followed by $1 million for construction in 2020, $2.5 million in 2021, and in FY 2022, two years ago, an additional $130,000 for furnishings was provided to complete the project. The Maryland State Library is so very proud to have provided a total of $3,955,000 for design, construction, and furnishings for this project. This helped them this county to get over the finish line. And as I said last time, although I was a bit premature because that was just the first grand opening for this branch, uh, this is the second. So I can really say this with all my heart. And then with a big sigh of relief, we all lived happily ever after. <laughs> this is a beautiful library and I'm very proud to be here today to represent the state of Maryland. Thank you so much. Hi, I am Greg Gilbert. I am the uh, board of president of the Board of Trustees of the Library. I've been on the board for nearly eight years now and actually have served as president twice. So I must be either doing something right or doing something wrong. Um, so um, today's dedication of the Kent Island expansion and renovation is a great milestone date in the continuing history of the Queen Anne's County Library. Uh, you may think you see a single story building housing our library However, I see a library of unlimited stories. Uh, written words, stories contained within the books, newspapers, journals, and magazines. Audiovisual stories contained within CDs, DVDs. And more importantly are the stories of the patrons and the staff create through the program services and the simple daily interactions. Um, today we have recognized individuals in the project's recent history but let us not forget the efforts of those who came before us, 
starting way back under the leadership of director Chuck Powers, who uh, recognized the need to expand this library and through his efforts, the uh, Ken Ireland Library Expansion Project was first placed on the list of county capital improvement projects. Uh, this was followed up by the previous director, John Walden, who reinvigorated the project by working to have a feasibility study done for the expansion of this project, which they then used to apply for the first of the multiple state grants that we were just talked about, um, which totaled nearly $4 million. Finally, with the help, he also helped then in the selection of the architectural firm which designed the building. This is also the era in which the Friends of the Queen Anne's County Library was formed, which not only has supported the library financially, but as indicated before, uh, was very important in clearly having evidence the community supported for this a project and the entire library system. And of course, our current director, Janet, uh, has tirelessly oversaw the final efforts from design, bidding, selecting a contractor by a flip of a card, and through a capital project funding, fundraising, and working through the construction completion to get us to this day. Uh, personally, I would like to recognize Julie, uh, who's here someplace. Yeah, there she is. Um, uh, the uh, branch manager here, who has been at the helm of this branch throughout the entire process, and continue to provide the same great services to our community during the entire construction project. So you did a wonderful job. Uh, so, so while we may be here for this dedication and recognition of, of integral hard work to allow us to be in this great building, I actually think we are here for a rededication of our efforts and commitment to provide the best possible library experience to all the patrons and the citizens of Green Ants County. Thank you. I will be your last speaker today. I know you're all going, Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> no more speaking after this. I am Janet Salazar. I am the director for the Queen Anne's County Public Library. And I, first of all, thank you all for coming because in the middle of the day on a Tuesday, you never know who's going to be here. So uh, this project has been a long time coming, and it's great to see that we are finally able to fully this open this branch for our community to use. And there are many, many people to thank for this, and that's my job today. So I would first like to thank our delegates and senators at the state level for funding the library at the state, because without state funding, we wouldn't get very far. I also would like to thank our commissioners and our county administrator for believing in this project and pledging the matching funds for the construction grants. I also would like to thank the State Library Agency and Irene for making these construction grants available to libraries all across the state. I thank our Board of Trustees for keeping the vision of a 21st century library branch that is right-sized for its community, first and foremost in the vision for Queen Anne's County. And thank you to our project team for creating such a beautiful, beautiful building. So thank you, Craig. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, David. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Phil. I'm sure I'm leaving out people. Thank you, everyone who worked on the project team. I also would like to thank our friends of the Queen Anne's County Library for all your support during this project and all of the other support you give us throughout the year. Thank you to our Capital Campaign Committee, our co-chairs, Jennifer Owino and Ann Ziegler, Patrick Perry, Kristen Peronis, Audrey Scott, Jean Ransom, Hillary Lindemann, Marshall Ryans, William Silva, Kathy Smerick, Debbie Gill, Julie Rinelli, and Allison Wood, without whom we would not have met and exceeded our fundraising goal. And thank you to our donors very, very much, who so generously gave to support the vision of this branch. Thank you to our library staff for all that you do and for learning new skills and workflows so our makerspace and our other services will be excellent resources for our community for a long, long time. And I personally would like to thank Julie for being my right hand during this project and for making such excellent lists so we never lost where we were. We always knew what we had to work on. Julie's great at that. I'd like to thank Kathy Smerick for stepping up and being our capital campaign advisor during this time. But most importantly, I would like to thank you, our community, for your unwavering support for this project, your love for your public library shows, and I appreciate it. 
It's one of the reasons why I took this job in Queen Anne's County, because your love for your library is really known throughout the state, so thank you. But now that we finished this very important project, it is time to look to our future. You've probably seen our new mobile library out and about. We're very excited about that. Um, it's helping us serve our underserved communities. In the fall, we're gonna be adding a library on your schedule kiosk. It will be located in the park in Crumpton and it will have a small dedicated um, collection for the, the people who live in the north part of county. And we hope with this kiosk up there, we will be able to better target where a, no a north county branch will be going, Todd. Um, just to like, let you know that. Um, so with your continued support, not only will our completed Kent Island branch be a resource for you for many years to come, but our entire library system will grow and evolve with our community. So I would like you to in I'd invite you to see all of the new spaces here. Please sign in on our board to let us know you are here and enjoy your time at the library. Thank you. That's great, great Janet, thanks. So uh, just to wrap things up today, I'll be very, very brief. I just wanted to thank again our guest speakers here today. They all represent uh, the various entities that assisted in ushering in this beautiful new project here in Queen Anne's County, uh, including the Maryland State Library, your county commissioners, our local library board, and most importantly, the citizens of Queen Anne's County. With, without, without you, we wouldn't be here today. So we really, really appreciate all the support of the community and the citizens here of Queen Anne's County. And lastly, I do want to recognize a few individuals, uh, dedicated county staff and our partners uh, from the design aspects and the construction aspects of this project. Uh, briefly, I want to recognize our, um, obviously the director of our Queen Anne's County Free Library, Janet Salazar, the Ken Island branch manager, Julie Rial R R Rinelli, excuse me, the architect, Craig Williams, Brad Hastings, and their team with the Becker Morgan Group. They're here today. Construction managers, Andrew Hooker and Justin Vega with Plano Condon Construction. And from Queen Anne's County Public Works, our chief engineer, Lee Edgar, and his project team, uh, David Sadiq, Matt Lucas, and construction inspe inspector, Phil Clark. So let's uh, have a round of applause for everybody here today. Thanks. So that concludes our ceremony today on our presentation. So please uh, take some time and uh, enjoy some fellowship with your, your citizens here, your friends, and take a tour of our new library here in, in Kent Island, on Kent Island, Queen Anne's, Kent Island. So that's great. Mm -hmm.